Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Janati Stolyarov II, Chairman of the United States Transhumanist Party, and I welcome you to the Great Transhumanist Game. In the Great Transhumanist Game, how does one win? One wins by fundamentally transforming existing human societies so as to inaugurate the next great era of our civilization. And of course, one wins by living to see that next great era. How can we get the emerging technologies of the next era accepted by the general public and implemented within everyday life? This is why I chose the title Advocating for the Future to unite all of the remarks of our speakers today. And one vehicle that we are going to have increasingly over the coming years to advocate for the future is the United States Transhumanist Party. And I would like to tell you a bit about how we are pursuing a peaceful political revolution for longevity. But these emerging technologies that are on the horizon, some of which have already entered our society, need advocates in order for us to transition to the next era of human civilization. We have technologies of uh, genetic engineering, nanotechnology, biotechnology, which can converge to procure radical life extension for hopefully as many of us as possible. We have technologies of artificial intelligence, which Dr. Ben Bernstein will be discussing today. We have space colonization, which might enable us to become a multi-planetary species and reduce the existential risks that might befall us if we put all our eggs in one basket, which is planet Earth. We have the possibility of sea studying modular ocean communities that can be used as experiments in governance. We have the possibility of vertical farming, which could massively increase the available arable land. We have possibilities for economical alternative energy, ranging from solar to geothermal to nuclear. We can dramatically automate production to allow for radical abundance, cheaper goods for as many people as possible. Autonomous electric and flying cars can both save lives and improve convenience and give us back a lot of our time. Augmented reality, virtual reality could open up new worlds. Encryption could help us protect our privacy. Technologies of the blockchain, cryptocurrencies, smart contracts, DAO, distributed autonomous organizations, companies that essentially run themselves, and ectogenesis, artificial wounds. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we lived in a world where all of these technologies were as broadly available as possible? That is our mission. But the political system today poses many obstacles. We have seen in the 2016 election the ugly political rhetoric that reiterates centuries-old fallacies that appeal to the lowest common denominator. Major fallacies like the fear of technology and trade taking jobs. Fallacies that pit some groups of people needlessly against others. We would like to change that. We would like to see candidates who are thoughtful, creative, and forward-thinking in discussing not just the issues of the day, but the future that Americans will face for decades and centuries to come. But the biggest, the biggest obstacle to that kind of vision today is the two-party system. In terms of AGI, which right now has not yet been developed, but some researchers such as Ben Goertzel and Peter Voss are working on it, AGI is probably several decades away. When it emerges, it may be capable of using creative judgment, but at that point, this is where documents like the Transhumanist Bill of Rights are extremely important because we would have to ask the question if it can act on as complex a level uh, within everyday society or within our economy as we humans, is it sentient? Is it deserving of rights? And again, what sort of, if we make an error, what sort of error do we want to make? And I would suggest that thinking about questions of rights and respect for these kinds of entities now is important to preempt massive social upheaval later on. The game that the established political system wants us to play is not the game that we should be playing. That is to say, we are often told if we want to achieve constructive change, however we may define it, we need to join the system. We need to join one of the established political parties, perhaps rise through their ranks, perhaps run for office, play the same political games 
that are played in Washington, D.C., or in state capitals, try to outmaneuver our rivals for some range of the moment advantage. Of course, what happens when we, who seek to fundamentally improve humankind and transform the world, start playing the game of the established powers by their rules? We will always lose. The established powers know how to play their game. They have millions, if not billions, of dollars devoted to it. They have extremely experienced lobbyists and strategists and media connections and an entire network of savvy individuals devoted to playing their game. If we play their game, we stand absolutely no chance. There's another game that some people want visionaries, those who seek radical transformations of society to play, and that is the game of insurrection and revolutionary violence. That is an even worse game than the game that would play within the rules of the system. That is a game that fundamentally reverses the progress of humankind, destroys the infrastructure of our great, though suboptimal, civilization, and, most tragically, deprives many good people of their lives and their health. We must never play that game. The game of violence, the game of riots, the game of destruction is not the transhumanist game. The transhumanist game is an eminently peaceful game. It is a game that seeks to build, not to destroy. So if a, a, a test laid out to me, this is an actual conversation, mm -hmm. by the way, this wasn't a theoretical. La last night, a test laid out by the person who I was talking to, he claimed, well, a computer should never have the ability uh, to have the discretion to hurt somebody, mm -hmm. right? Um, that, that a computer, e even if it believes it's in self-defense, a computer shouldn't be able to kill a person. Uh, do you agree with that? I think that would be a very difficult proposition to defend once we have actually sentient beings, because that would be just like saying, well, we've, we've had some wars with people from a certain country, and well, most of the time those people are decent and they're peaceful, but uh, we really don't want them to hurt us. So uh, why don't we insert a chip in all of Iraqis to prevent them from ever engaging in acts of violence against Americans? And I think people would see the problem with that. There would be so many contexts in which humans as they are today would be capable of inflicting grievous harm or injustice. And that's not an anti-human statement, that's just a recognition of what is true and fairly ubiquitous in our world. So if you have a sentient entity, whatever it is, and it has been wronged in some way, shouldn't it have the right to defend its own existence? I think, uh, of course, if, if you have just an instrumental system, uh, I would actually be warier of giving it the ability to make uh, decisions to utilize harmful force algorithmically, say uh, right now a drone targeting system shouldn't be able to just use an algorithm to select its own targets because the algorithm could be flawed. It's actually not the outcome of sentience that I'm worried about. It's the dumb algorithms that I'm worried about because those are the algorithms that could have mistakes or biases in their programming and therefore uh, the algorithm might think, oh, there's a 95.6% probability that this group of people is a group of terrorists, but uh, you only get as good an output from your algorithm as the input data and what if the input data are not culturally sensitive to say the behaviors of wedding parties in the Middle East and that 95.6% probability, if you actually considered all the data, would be a 0.3% probability, but the algorithm is bad. So I think today one should certainly never allow automated algorithms to make the decision of who lives or who dies or even to inflict milder harms. Neither playing the current establishment's political games nor attempting to blow up the current system will work. However, the hope that I extend to all of you is that each of you as an individual can become an agent for positive change. 
simply in your day-to-day -day lives, build, discuss, connect with those who hold similarly high standards. And together, we can reach the next era. We can repair the damage. We can reverse the vicious downward spiral that has engulfed political discourse in the Western world. But we must do it ourselves. The system will not do it for us, and the insurrectionaries will not do it for us either. We can push back the expiration dates that we have unfortunately been saddled with. We can continue to increase life expectancy and eventually reach longevity escape velocity, which is a condition in which additional incremental increases in life expectancy exceed the passage of time, the rate of our chronological aging. And eventually we hope that our chronological aging will no longer be correlated with our biological aging or senescence. However, to do that, we must fundamentally transform our politics, our society, and our culture so that policies are friendly toward the most ambitious and dramatic scientific and technological progress that is possible given our material resources and the scope of our imagination. So I encourage you to join us within the transhumanist movement, which is an international movement of thinkers, inventors, and artists and activists who seek to be a part of this next era of humankind and who hope to personally be there along with you. Thank you very much.